today we're going to talk about how important are um, fashion trend boards and how you can create one. Essentially, um, a fashion trend board is basically a visual aid that is used by um, many companies to assess the current fashion environment. Fashion trend boards are visual layouts that give a comprehensive overview um, of the um, fashion market and the behavior for the upcoming seasons. Um, this can include a, a trend direction, such as many different silhouettes, um, color direction, print design, as well as different pattern inspirations. Trend boards can also incorporate a lot of variety of brand silhouettes from different competitors in their point of view. Um, although trend boards are primarily used as a board illustration regarding the trend direction, um, you can actually use trend boards to be very specific and to show the exact items that you plan on promoting uh, for the upcoming season. We really know that visuals sometimes can help communicate things that words cannot. Um, so we usually say that a picture is worth a thousand words. Um, so therefore, mood boards are usually referred to as a great tool to create that picture for uh, many of your clients or your company. So in an essence, fashion trend boards really do help the merchandising team visualize and compile um, a different set of inspirational elements that are used by the designers to kind of like flesh out different ideas um, at the beginning of um, the buying season or a specific um, design project. Trend boards are oftentimes referred to as mood boards, which can be used interchangeably, certainly. Um, and they're extremely useful for establishing the aesthetic feel um, of not only the company and what they stand for, but also for their brand identity um, and the multiple channels that they um, serve their customers via. So it's a really good opportunity to explore many different um, styles that the brand would like to incorporate from photography styles to different color palettes. Um, typography, patterns, and just the overall look um, and feel of the, um, of the brand company. I'm going to show you a few other examples and then we'll go ahead and get started in uh, learning how you could put together a successful trend board. Now, before we get started, it's always preferable that you have your fashion workspace loaded. We're going to start by clicking on File and then selecting New. From this new window, you can go ahead and select the Print View. Then you can add the project name. In the width, you can type in 17 and in the height, you can go ahead and type in 11. The orientation can remain as Landscape and the pixels per inch are going to remain at 300. We will leave everything else as default and then we're going to go ahead and say create. A blank window will show up. Before you get started, it's really important for you to acknowledge the layers section. The layers are really important for any design workflow since they are really allowing us to work on individual parts of an image uh, while not affecting other parts. They will allow you to modify images, add text, change colors, put different pictures on the same page, um, and a lot more without modifying your original photo or your original space. The first thing you can do is go ahead and unlock your background layers. Next, what you can do is um, try to find five different images of the trend you're interested in featuring um, and be sure to save quality images. From this point, you can go ahead and click on file again and scroll down to place embedded. I have already found five images of the high tech wearable trend that I would like to feature. I'm going to go ahead and select the first image and click place. Your image will import in many different sizes. This is a really good opportunity to go ahead and size up or size down. You can do so by hovering over on one of the edges and scaling up or down. You can also use the arrow to position your picture. Once you're done, you can click on the check mark right here or click enter. As you can see, picture number one has been inserted. We're going to go ahead and repeat the process. File, place embedded, add your second image, and click place. You can go ahead and move things around and scale up or down as necessary. At this point, you can notice that I have added three images I would like to work with. I will start by selecting one of the images I would like to modify. For example, I'm going to go ahead and start with this image. Depending on the Adobe Photoshop version you have, you can also select the layer by simply clicking on the image. At this point, you can go ahead and make your way to the rectangular marquee tool and then click on select and mask. You can select the quick selection tool 
and then from the view mode you can change your view to overlay red. This will allow you to better visualize your selections. You can use the plus to add to your selection or the minus to subtract to your selection. You can also use the size right here to increase the size of your brush. And then you can carefully start to add to your selection. If something like this happens, you can simply switch back to the minus and remove to the selection. Once you have been able to select your subject, you can go ahead and scroll down to output menu and then switch from selection to layer mask. You can go ahead and click OK. You can see that I have successfully removed the background. At this point, I can go ahead and repeat the same process with the remaining of my images. Select the image, choose one of the selection tools, select and mask. You can also use the lasso tool or the brush tool by increasing the size and be more specific with the selections. Once you feel like you have completed your task, you can go ahead and make sure that your output is select to layer mask and then click OK. At this point, you can also use the visibility tool to either show certain objects or hide them. You can also use the rectangular marquee tool to select an area by clicking and dragging, then using the adjustment layer and selecting or adding specific colors. For example, I'm going to go ahead and choose a gradient. And then click OK. I can also use the text tool to add any text. You can change the text color, font and size from your control panel menu. If this is not showing, remember you can go back to your windows and then select your control panel menu. You can double click and select your text and then click on the color to select any color you would like to have or perhaps you can also pick a color that you already have available on your trend board like this. At this point you can save your color to your swatches and then click OK. Another cool tool you can use is to add specific adjustments to your trend board. For example, I'm going to go ahead and select on the move tool, click on one of my layers or one of my images that I have on my trend board and then make my way down to the black and white cookie or the adjustments layer and modify the color like this. Something else you can do is select one of your layers or click on one of the images you'd like to modify, double click on this empty area right here on your layer where the layer styles option will show up and apply a style or an effect that you find interesting. For example, this is a drop down shadow, something like this. You can also change the blend mode. And once you have found something you feel you're happy with, you can go ahead and click OK. You're welcome to explore other options such as the blur tool, the eraser tool and the stamp tool, which can really help enhance the overall look of your trend board. And last but not least, I would like to show you how you can add the background image to really unify um, your overall composition. Scroll all the way down to your layer zero, click on your layer zero, and then from the black and white cookie, you can go ahead and apply a solid color, something like this. You can also apply a gradient, something like this. Or you can apply a pattern, which might be a little bit more fun. Something like this. From the drop down menu, you will see that Photoshop already has default uh, patterns that you could work with. Um, however, many of you might want to um, select a pattern that you are interested in. I'll show you how you can do that. Find the pattern image online. Make sure you save it as a high quality photo. And then from the file menu, go ahead and click file open. This is a pattern that I've been able to find. I'm going to go ahead and select it and then click open. You can create a pattern by selecting the marquee tool and dragging a bounding box around your entire object. From here, make your way to the edit button and then scroll all the way down to where it says define pattern. Click on define pattern and then click OK. Find your trend board and then from the layer zero, once you click on your black and white cookie and then pattern, 
you will see that the latest pattern you have defined will be applied. Now the pattern could be either big or small, so you can use the scale tool to scale it up or down. Once you feel like you're happy, you can go ahead and click OK. Once you feel like you're about to be done, you can go ahead and save your file. You can do so by clicking on File, Save As. I will save mine on my computer. Find the folder where you would like to save it. I usually save all of my files on my Creative Cloud. And then from this drop down menu, you can see that you have multiple different options to save. I would recommend that you always save a Photoshop copy because that is the native file and it will allow you to go back in and edit and play around some more with this particular trend board. And later, go back and save a second copy as a JPEG or a picture. That's all for now. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions.